All right, Biggie, we're just about 10 days out from the Arnold Classic 2020 in Columbus, and we have a, a repeat on the show. Uh, it was very, very popular in the last workout, so by popular to men, we got Toto back on the show. Toto, welcome back, man. Thank you. So what are we doing, uh, Biggie, today? Uh, Toto wanted to do some arms, okay. so actually today we're going to do some biceps, uh, gonna do some um, very high-intensity techniques. Probably would be one of his last real intense workouts before the uh, Arnold. He's going to start backing off soon. Uh, but uh, still, I know Toto loves to hit it hard. So we're going to kill him and his partner George today and a little bit with Silvio's too and have some fun. Why did you want to do biceps, Toto? Uh, I just want to, you know, make sure when I'm on the stage, my arm will be nice and full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we need to train yeah. in Columbus. You need to bring Merlin to Columbus yeah. then. <laughs> Right. Well, I'll see what I can do real quick for him 10 minutes out from the show. <laughs> Maybe you can keep the pump from now till the show. That'd be great. All right. Thanks for having you. Okay, guys. So the first exercise we're doing here is on one of, one of our favorite machine preacher curls. The technique that we are using is concentric emphasis or emphasizing the positive portion of the rep. So what he's doing is he's right from the bottom. He's going to move the repetition upwards very slowly over about four to five seconds. This is really, really an intense way to do curls because you'll, you have to, the body wants to move the weight really quickly, especially out of the bottom. But what I'm forcing him to do is to move the weight slowly, centimeter by centimeter, right from the bottom. So he's not kicking out of the bottom at all. He's raising real slow over four seconds all the way to the top. You'll feel every inch of this movement. And especially on a preacher curl machine where it has to be so controlled, you can't use any swinging or momentum can't use the shoulders, it's only the biceps. It's a very, very painful technique. Give this a shot if you're looking for a new way to blast your biceps and really, really feel them uh, over just moving the weight up and down at a rapid pace. Okay, so the next movement is gonna be the standard barbell curl, but not done in the standard way. So he's not going too crazy heavy. As you can see, he's just using 60 pounds, but his form is super strict. He's not leaning back. He's not moving at the shoulders. He's keeping his elbows real close to his body, and he's using pure biceps power to bring the weight to the top. Now, of course, as you can see, he's also lowering the weight over four seconds. So this is an eccentric, uh, eccentric set emphasizing the negative portion of the rep. Of course, the negative on any exercise is extremely important because the negative portion of the rep is where a lot of the fiber trauma actually takes place. So we're actually damaging a lot of muscle fiber on the way down. And of course, damaging muscle fibers is what ignites the anabolic process. The body has to repair those fibers and make them bigger and stronger. So by emphasizing the negative, we're really taking care of that here. And it's also a great change from the first exercise where we emphasize the positive. As you can see, he's using everything he can to get the reps done, staying strict on every rep. Okay, so up next, we have a little superset here. And what we're doing is an incline cable curl. Have the bench, bench is set about 45 degrees or so. So he's leaning back, puts a unique angle on the biceps for curling and we're emphasizing the stretch so what he's trying to do is he's trying to come all the way down to full extension so his arms are all the way out straight and actually maybe even bend back at the elbows just slightly to put a little bit more pull on the biceps he's holding that position for about two seconds and then he's curling to the top it's okay to use a little bit of of a rise in the elbows on this not too much because he's trying to curl up to the forehead and get that extra squeeze at the top. And since the cable is providing tension at all times, even when he raises the elbow up, he still has tension on the biceps as opposed to when you, when you have a barbell in your hands. So again, under control to the bottom, holding the stretch for a full two seconds and making sure the biceps are under a complete stretch at the bottom, and then curling all the way up to full contraction and just holding the contraction for about one second so the whole rep is controlled from bottom to top. And this is a superset.
Now the great thing about this superset is what we're doing is we, in the first exercise, are emphasizing the stretch position of the rep. Now we're emphasizing the contracted position of the rep. So now, rather than pulling from the bottom of the cable, we're pulling from the top. We've completely changed the angle. His elbows are up away from the body the whole time. And when you do this, this actually engages the brachialis quite a bit. When the brachialis is developed, it pushes the bicep up a little bit higher, giving the illusion of greater peak. He's keeping the elbows in that position the whole time. And he's squeezing all the way to the forehead and he's hyper contracting for two seconds. By hyper contracting, he's not only holding the weight in the position, but he's actively flexing the biceps with everything he's got at the top. This puts a really huge, tremendous burn on the biceps and he's just about out of gas here. I'll give him a force. Now maybe a little front double bicep for us. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> All right guys, so what we're doing here to finish off is we're doing seated barbell curls, which are pretty much just half reps using the top portion of the rep. I have Toto actually letting his wrists bend down just a little bit, which actually takes the forearms out of the movement and works more of the biceps. We're doing high reps here, as many reps as possible to flush the blood in there, just to finish off the workout after we pretty much tore down all those muscle fibers. It's a great way to finish a workout, any workout, with a high rep set, fill it with blood, oxygen, nutrients, uh, and everything else you need for repair and recovery. Awesome set. <laughs> Looks great, man. All right, Merlin, you have any good questions this week? Yeah, I got a question which I guess on the surface it's seems pretty basic, but I guess if somebody asked it, maybe somebody else is thinking about it, which was um, just wanted me to explain, like, why is it that doing supposedly too many sets or too, too many sets in a workout or doing too much in a workout, why is that a bad thing? Like. I think he's trying to say like, wouldn't doing more equal, do more work actually equal more growth? So why is it overtraining? At, yeah, so, so why, do, why do people say that you could do too much? Um, and you know, my answer would be, if, you know, really on the surface, the answer would be like, well, if doing more was better, then wouldn't it be better to just, you know, train 24 hours a day right. and just do endless sets? But our bodies don't work that way. So um, basically what you, Want to do. So what's, what's really bad about you know doing too much um, is if you overtax the muscles, the body, the central nervous system, then you're not going to be able to properly recover from your workout. Now we don't grow while we're in the gym. We don't you know get all pumped up and that equals growth right there. It's when we're out of the gym, when we're eating, recuperating, resting, sleeping, that's when the repair, the recuperation process, and the overcompensation process takes place, which is basically rebuilding and repairing torn down muscle tissue so that it can become bigger and stronger and more resilient for the next workout, um, and also allowing the central nervous system to recover 
so that you know the next workout is going to be able to be um, highly intense because if your central nervous system isn't recovered your muscles aren't going to fire as well you're not going to infect as many muscle fibers you're going to be weaker you're going to be lethargic uh, of course your joints and your ligament attachments they need recovery as well so the whole body as a system um, from the muscles to the central nervous system needs to recover and that's the only way you're going to grow so if you spend too much time in the gym so basically if your capacity is here um, and this is like the sweet spot say that's um, 10, 10 good sets for a muscle group. Let's say that's like your sweet spot. Every set that you do past that 10 reps, 10 sets, um, is going to basically impede the recovery process that much more. So it's like, you know, you want to, you're digging a big hole uh, and you want to basically refill that hole and put a little dirt on top. The little dirt on top, the little extra dirt on the top of the mound is extra muscle. If you dig a hole that's too deep, and then you come back to work out again before you've refilled that hole, um, you're just simply not recovered and you're not gonna grow. You can actually not only prevent growth, you can actually go backwards. So you can actually atrophy muscle. So people who overtrain to a very large degree um, either find that they're not growing, they may find that they're getting weaker, they may find that they're getting sick a lot, or, you know, getting a lot of illnesses like you know colds and flus and things like that because the immune system is being affected. Um, and on a really, really large scale level, there are people who actually exercise to the point that they end up getting hospitalized. They end up damaging the muscles, There's, you know, damaging the system to the point that they actually get so ill. Um, and they can cause, you know, things like, you know, advanced diseases down the road if you're doing it in the long term. Now, of course, that's very extreme. So basically just speaking to people out there, you want to get into the gym, you want to do an intense focus workout. Uh, and you want to feel like you, you want to feel worked you want to feel exhausted you want to get sweated up you want to feel like you're done but you should not be leaving the gym crawling uh and, and not being able to function the rest of the day um, and needing to sleep 13 hours a night that means that you're overdoing it what what would you say is the longest amount of time someone should spend in the gym just working out uh training lifting weights well, not I mean, including cardio. I mean, I think I, I think that you know a lot of that depends on what people are doing in the gym now because obviously there's a lot of people who spend a lot of time talking you know, on the phone, just lifting, taking yourself. Yeah. But if you're really in the gym and you're doing it in hard work, I think you know 90 minutes to two hours is really the capacity that most of us, the average person, has. Um, you know, obviously other things come into play, genetics what supplements you're on, what special supplements you may be on, which will increase your ability to recover. Some people have incredible recovery ability and they can recover from 20 sets for a body part. There are some people who on the other end of the spectrum, you know, if they do more than six or seven sets, they're overtraining. So you have to find that, that Sweet spot for yourself. But I think that if, you know, if I'm gonna put, you know, a generalization, um, I've always found for myself, and I think that I have very average genetics. Um, I was born very, very skinny, very ectomorphic, um, um, but I was able to put on muscle if I trained smart and I ate right, uh, very, very slowly, never quickly, um, and I never really did more than 10 to 12 sets for a body part, even at my you know highest level, but I always made sure that every set was at least a failure, that every set was, was full focus and concentration, uh, and that there was no dilly-dallying, so every set was, you know, uh, definitely taken to a point of, of you know exhaustion for the set and 10 to 12 sets always work for me and I've never really worked out I've never done three hour workouts uh, most of my workouts from beginning to end take 90 minutes to two hours uh, maybe a little bit less if I don't have a partner so uh, basically the answer is you overtrain you are not going to grow and you may even go backwards all right thanks Biggie.